Today I am making a boche. So I've had some lemon in the freezer, which I did want to use for something else, but uh, I was unable to use it for one reason or another. So it's going in this boche. First boche I've ever done. And no nonsense, like city steading, instead of farting around, trying to get all the rind and stuff like that. I'm gonna squeeze the juice in, and I'm gonna chop up the rest and just bosh it all in. It doesn't need to be sterilized because we're gonna be boiling it, which will kill any bacteria and so on. And now in with an orange. Look at the color of that. It's actually a mandarin, which I didn't expect. It's got some really nice color in there. So that juice is going in there and we're gonna do the same. We're gonna cut it up and let it boil in for about five minutes, I think it is. I need to check on that. Get all that juice in there, which is gonna add nice flavor. And with a boche, what we do is we cook the honey. We actually caramelize it. I'm gonna do it for 30 minutes and hopefully that'll give it enough flavor to make it nice and caramelized. We have juiced them and sliced them up now they're in smaller bits and we are going to put that into there and let that boil for about i don't know maybe five minutes and then let it cool around cool down to room temperature and um, we'll use this as our start i'm going to chop up some raisins put some raisins in there as well which gives it a nice tannings and uh, mouthfeel and I'm just going to chop these ever so slightly that's my alarm to tell me that the uh, things are finished sterilizing so I'm just going to chop these up a little bit just to get them broken and these are going to go in with that and we'll all be drained off normally you leave these sat in the bottom of your drink but because it's going to be a bow shape the most of the flavor is going to be coming from the caramelized honey. So these aren't really going to add a great deal apart from maybe tannings. Maybe a little bit of flavor. Um, and that's going to get added to that pot. And there we are. In that goes. Into the, into the mix. And turn the heat down slightly. And uh, get my hand out of the sodding way. It's had its five minutes. Now I'm gonna let that steep for about 20 minutes and cool down slightly and continue to release some flavors. In that time, I'm going to walk the dog. Now, <laughs> here comes the part that I've not done before. Here comes the part where we caramelize the honey. Um, it has been said that it, it gets very, very hot so just be really really careful if you do try this this is my first time doing it so i'm not really prepared as to what's going to happen so we shall see we'll play it by ear and we'll go from there so first of all i have a 720 grams of blossom honey i've got some cheap honey which is mainly what I'm going to caramelize and I'm going to keep the blossom honey to put in or sort of half of the blossom honey to put in at the end uh, to add a bit of the flavor from the blossom honey in there as well so we're going to go straight ahead get all this honey in there which could take some time so I'm going to speed it up as to not bore you Right, so the honey is in there. We're now going to turn it on. Um, we're not going to, I'm not going to have it on a mega heat to begin with because, like I say, I don't know what's going to happen. Now, I'm going to have to stir this continuously for 30 minutes because that is what you have to do. Otherwise, it will burn. Now, I don't want it to burn. I don't want to have to waste all that honey. It's a lot of honey. Um, so, 
I'm just going to keep stirring it, even though I don't think I have to yet. I'm going to. Uh, and I'm going to do that for 30 minutes until the consistency of this changes. It should go a really, really nice brown colour. Sorry about the camera angle. I'm getting used to my new tripod. Um, and this should give us a really nice charred, burnt flavour to it. And then what we'll do is we'll add some water to this. Um, and people have said, don't let it cool down too much. If you let it cool down, it will go as solid as a rock. So don't let it cool down too much. Big pan as well. This is the biggest pan I could find. So yeah, I can feel it getting looser. So the heat's coming through now. Um, it smells nice. But I am going to speed this up because I don't want to be videoing this for 30 minutes. Plus, if anything goes wrong, <laughs> I want it to look as quick as possible. Took a while for it to get to the boil, but now it's bubbling over. And this is where... You keep on giving it a stir continuously. So that it doesn't burn onto the pan. Because you don't want to waste your honey, honey. I don't even think, I don't even know whether I've got this too high. I suppose it's a matter of trial and error. If I burn it this time, next time, don't bloody burn it. <laughs> I think we're doing well. Might reduce it a bit. Because we're going for a caramelization, not a char grill. I mean, I think it's changing color. It looks darker than it did originally. Yeah, I don't keep toying with the idea of turning it down and then I turn it down and then I feel like I need to turn it back up. So I'm just going to keep it up for now and then just keep stirring it back and forth making every bit of the bottom of the pan make contact with the spoon it reduces down as well so the honey that i did put in and i realized that i needed to put all of that honey in so i'm gonna have to use a different one to um sweeten it with but i've got another one of those uh Blossom honey wants to do that with anyway, so. Yeah, when you do a boche and you cook the honey out, um, I learned the other day whilst watching City Steading's video, uh, is that you actually convert some of the sugars into non-fermentable sugars. So they stay as sugar, but they just can't be fermented, which then may cause you to lose some of your potential ABV if you've calculated for X, Y, Z. Yeah, this is just gonna keep on going now and uh, 20 minutes probably left now. We'll be back. So I've got 10 minutes left and I've actually turned the heat down again because I turned it up, it got going and I can feel it catching, you see. I can feel it starting to uh, burn. So, um, a vigorous stirring and whatnot. And uh, 10 more minutes to go. And yes, I have been stirring this the whole bloody time. Which is what they said to do. So, yeah. Just keep on stirring. Keep on stirring. And it's got a weird, really weird colour to it. Um, my spoon seems to have melted. <laughs> Whoa! 
What the fudge? That's not good, man. That is not good at all. Um, shit. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> what the fucking hell do I do now? Um, shit, shit, shit. Dilemma. I really don't want to use a metal spoon. I'm going to fucking burn myself. I'm a choice. <laughs> you saw it here first. Hot honey is hot. Bloody hell. I did not expect that. Now, that might have been because I left it in there a sec while I turned the... Uh, camera on. Really don't know. Hello dog. Are you going to shake your boche? Shake your shake your boche. Yeah, I recommend going and watching uh, City Steading's bourbon boche. I'm going to buy some oak nibs and stuff for this. Uh, can't get the exact ones that they seem to use, but um, I think American oak is going to be the best. And I'm just going to oak it. I'm not going to bourbon it because the bourbon blocks, they're like 40 odd pounds. And I'm not paying that for a possible one-off brew, depending on how it turns out. Um, can't believe I burnt me <laughs> melted it. I just hope that there's none of it in here. Because that really wouldn't be good. <laughs> Unenvironmentally friendly mead. Now maybe it has a different uh, heat. I suppose it's a bit like molten lava at the moment. So yeah, be very careful when making a boche. Shit the bed. Do you know what that tells me though? It does tell me that I need to purchase a stainless steel brewing uh, spoon. Definitely. <laughs> Not long left now anyway. Right, so I've called time on that now. It was as near as damn it. It started to get a bit of a, a smoky aroma to it so i think it's ready i don't want to overdo it because i don't want burnt flavors or all like that so it's off the heat now i'm just going to let that cool down for a little bit i'm going to calculate how much water i need and sort that out add that to that as mixing it in before it fully cools down uh, when adding water apparently it can foam up if you don't let it cool down properly so we're going to be very careful when we do that and yep we'll back for that shortly after that's cooled down a little bit so the thing about me and patience is i have none so i literally went over there checked how much water i got there and i'm about to start adding water to this there you go bit of foam yeah it seems a bit agitated this is what's left of the honey from the jars i've just rinsed them all out because i had a couple that had bits of residue in and it breaks me to waste it. So we are using all that up today. Extra fermentables and all that jazz. And of course the bees work tirelessly to make it. So why the bloody hell would you waste it? Whoops. Really should have tied it up before making the video, but you know what? I just don't care. I need to figure out how to get a better angle from over here when showing doing this normally i have to just hold the camera um, which isn't really a problem so let's quickly wash my hands in the sanitizing liquid and get my towel and now we're going to add i've got a liter over there i assume that's about another liter there so i need Dun, 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 dun. Some sort of measuring thing. 
There we go. This will do. It's got measurements on it. It will tell me what 500 mil is. So we'll do a couple of 500 mils in there. And then we'll see where we're at. Should probably be stirring that in whilst doing it. Let's get to an added litre. Stir that in with my metal spoon because my plastic one melted. And I can feel this starting to clump up already. Yeah, weird. Trying to solidify, but we're not gonna let it. Oh, hell no! It is, it's literally trying to solidify again. We don't want that. So, we're gonna keep on stirring that in. Like so. I mean, that's still really hot, so it should just melt back down into this water, which is nice. Um, and then we're gonna go over there, we're gonna add it to the orange, lemon, and raisin tea starter that we made. I mean, that is a lovely colour now. Dark. Almost like a maroon. Almost red. Very nice. Now, I'm gonna be very careful and I'm gonna tip this in to the thing over there. So, let's pop over there and we'll get this we Over here, in the brewing corner. Today I'm using a champagne style yeast, which is Lalvin EC1118. Mm, 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 mm. Not my preferred. Not my preferred yeast. I started off using Mangrove Jack's mead yeast and that seems to be good enough for me. I'm just going to get this in the water, get it hydrated, ready to go go. Make sure it's nice and happy in there. Give it a little jimmy around like so right now we're going to add this which is the boiling hot stuff so let's be careful with this we do not want to get ourselves covered in this stuff And that has all dissolved really nicely. It's got a bit of residue in there, but I'm gonna go and fill it, this up to add a bit of cold water to it so that we can maybe get the last couple of bits of residue out of there. Because let's face it, we want it. I always aim for about four and a half liters just because that's what I can fit in my thing. Where are we at there? That's three and a half. I want to add more honey anyway. So we shall put in approximately half of this. I'm not going to weigh tax. I'm not really that bothered. Just go with the flow. Get some of that in there, which will increase the volume as well. Just like that. It's probably under half there. Let's add a bit more. And that should do it. Give or take, once that's settled back down. Give that another jiggle. Okay. I need a spoon. I'm going to be using the bottom of this spoon. Now, I have actually just found a piece of plastic in there, which is very, very annoying. So, 
now I'm stuck with the dilemma of what to do now. So the first thing that springs to mind is one way or another it's probably going to have plastic in it. But I'm going to sanitize this hot bag quickly and then I'm going to pour this liquid in fact, I'm going to stir it in first. Stir that honey in, which would be a great idea. Mix all that honey in. Once the honey's mixed in nicely, I'll then get this, tip it in through there, separating any bits of plastic or anything else that's in there. I'm not wasting it. If it tastes like plastic, I'll probably ditch it, but We'll not know until later on anyway. It doesn't smell like plastic. But it's not what you want, is it? Might as well aerate it while we're here as well. Get that honey all mixed in. Yeah, it was probably about half actually. Right. You live and learn. I just didn't think it would ever be that hot to be able to melt flipping cookware grade plastic. Right, so now we're gonna have to siphon through this bag, which should be pretty simple, really. It's actually a hot bag. And I just realized you can't see what I'm doing. Not very clever of me, is it? So it's going through this hot bag. It's got super fine, super fine holes on it. And we're just going to get that going like that. Probably lower it down a bit so I'm not getting it all over the bloody place. And if I'd have thought about it better, I'd have probably used a more open kind of thing. Because now I've just got a big tea bag in my hand. And I'm going to be stood here waiting for it to drip through. So, <laughs> woo, live and learn. So that took quite a while. I was having to actually spin the bag around because it's not actually that porous. So I'm not sure whether these are actually any good for uh, hopping with. I haven't tried them with hopping. Um, but yeah, if I kind of kinch the bag like that, it, it allows it out. But I don't think doing this is actually a bad thing because, I'll show you in a second, it's caught loads of micro bits. Like, I'm talking loads. Tons of bits and bobs in there. So that's been saved from going in the drink, really. Um, yeah, so happy days. That should, <laughs> by rights, be uh, ready to go back into the doflop. Add some more water. Each time this is aerating it anyway, so it's not a major downside to it. It's still quite warm, so we do need some more cold water. Definitely too warm to pitch the yeast yet. But we still have room for more cold water. Probably about three quarters of a litre. I'm 
going to do it just under. And we'll see what room we've got left after it's in the, in the damage on. Or carboy, as some people call it in America. Americans seem to call it carboy. Don't know what that is, but sounds cool, doesn't it? Carboy. Yeah, man, got my carboy. Right then, let's take a hide the Romita. Testa Rooney. See where we're at with that. Because that's the be all and end all. And if it's not going to be a high one, you could probably add a little bit more right here, right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some nutrients right here, right now. One level teaspoon per gallon. One teaspoon. Level-ish. And in it goes. Some nutrients to help the yeast on their way. We're going to mix that back in. It's all about the mixing of stuff. Mixing, mixing, mixing. Although, you know, you don't actually have to mix your honey in. I did an experiment where I lobbed in some honey uh, into the bottom of a carboy in a demijohn and then added yeast, or added water on top of that and then added yeast. And you could see it day by day, the yeast eating through the layer of sugar. There is a video on it somewhere, if you have a look. It's called uh, Maybe Mediocre Experiment. Right, that's the nutrients in there. And I just think I have a little taste of this because I can. I'm currently not drinking for uh, a a <laughs> yeah a a charity sponsored thing um, so luckily there's no alcohol in this yet so I can actually taste and maybe have a guess at what it might taste like once fermented because that alcohol fermentation actually gives a bit of the flavor to the drink itself I mean, if you think about vodka, vodka hasn't really got much of a flavour. It tastes like vodka, obviously, but the main flavour from it is uh, is just the alcohol itself. So, hydrometer test. See where we're at. See what we've got to work with. It's looking quite high. Which isn't a bad thing, really. Oh, hydrometer. It's just over the 120 mark. I'm going to say 122. I can't guess any higher than that because it's uh, it doesn't show me. So, oh, gee. point. One, two, two. Boom. All right, let's have a wee taste of what we might get. And it always tastes better once it's got the alcohol present as well. Of course. Quite pleasant. Slightly caramelly. Not amazingly. It might come through more once the sugar's gone and fermented. Hmm, not bad. So, for my next trick, Oh, nuts. I just hope that that doesn't take that over the 130, uh, um, four and a half. Because that won't be good. It means that we'll lose some product. I won't be able to put it all in. I need a funnel. Funnel, 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 funnel. Where is my funnel? 
there is my funnel. And now, we add the juice. We're going to check the temperature of this. Make sure that it's below 20 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. If you are from across the pond. In fact, a lot of the brewers that I watch are actually uh, from America. Um, so I have to do a lot of the conversion myself. So when they give you an idea of a recipe, you have to kind of think it up yourself and figure it out. See, at the moment, it doesn't matter about this being aerated because there's no yeast in there, there's no alcohol. We're not oxygizing anything apart from the, the must, which actually needs oxygen. Right, I have a plan now. I'm going to add that to that, just to make sure that I do have enough. I'm gonna swizzle this back out into there and then back into there just because I want all of that yeasty goodness give them a fair a fair shot at life to create the colony get in there get all that sugar fermented Absolutely perfect. Just where I like it. Just as the bend starts to go. <sighs> well, at least something went right. We're going to mix that now. We're going to mix it in. With my burnt spoon. <laughs> Melted. Can't believe that. That's terrible, isn't it? Uh, and we won't know whether there's a... A horrible off flavor because of that either looks like I might end up drinking this one myself but we shall see right that's that mixed up anyway I'm gonna get the The bong. The bongaroonie. And then we're going to just give it a quick jig. Boy. Pardon me. How very rude. And that's why we should have a bit of paper towel around. find the paper towel so we just have to make do with a bit of splurting out. Right there we go. Whew. Got all that jamming in there now it's lovely jubbly. So I've melted my spoon, possibly destroyed the boche with plastic and now I've got ahead of myself and added the yeast before checking the temperature. Why I did that, I have absolutely no idea. Oh, the excitement of getting a brew on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the sink up with some water and I'm going to leave it in some cold water. Hopefully it will be okay. If not, I'm going to have to add more yeast at a later date. 